When we started our kitchen renovation, I didn't think I was going to DIY everything, but as I learned new woodworking skills, it almost started to feel like anything was possible. So this week we are attempting to DIY our custom cabinet doors. So let's see how this goes. Hello guys, welcome back. Welcome back to our kitchen, welcome back to the cottage. We're starting a new project today, as usual with all of our days. <laughs> I have been procrastinating this one for some time, for some reason, I just think that it's another one of those things that I've never done before. But I think with everything that I've learned through this renovation, it's something that I can accomplish. Fingers crossed, toes crossed, legs crossed, everything crossed. We are tackling cabinet doors, drawer fronts, cabinet doors, all of the above. On the last episode, we completed our DIY range hood. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love the texture and just the weight that it gives the kitchen too. So if you haven't checked that out, I will leave it linked for you so you can watch it after this video to catch up. I definitely wanna do some sort of shaker for the cabinet doors and most of the drawer fronts. I don't want them to be just a clean edge shaker. I want it to have some kind of detail inside. I don't quite know what that detail is going to be. So we're gonna experiment with some things and see where what, what we get to. But I want some of the drawer fronts to be different and just smooth. I found some inspiration pictures that I really liked the way that it was mixed. And I even liked it even better that there were less that I had to build. <laughs> so if I can get away with making five to six less, shaker style fronts. I think that that's a win for me. Let me count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just for this side. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. 42 fronts that need to be done in some form. I wasn't quite sure what kind of hinges we were gonna need. So I kind of went in with an open mind. They had two different types of hinges. One was specific for a face frame. I didn't know they made those, but that makes so much sense because I was kind of thinking, how am I going to attach these? Like the face frame kind of comes into the, you know, the cabinet part and what is it attached to? So they do make them for face frames and then they have the option for just a regular hinge or a soft close hinge. I found that there was quite a bit of a price difference. This pack has 10 hinges in it and it was $50. Dollars. So this will do five cabinets because you need two hinges per cabinet. Not only do I want to mix the design of the fronts of the cabinets and drawers, I also want a mix of hardware. I was actually at an estate sale on one of my many trips to estate sales and I always like to look in the garages because it's usually where they have the hardware and the kind of like more building materials. So I was looking in the garage at one estate sale and I found some bags of brass knobs a whole bunch of them as you can tell and they're mixed but they're all very beautiful together why i like this particular style is it looks like our rosettes in the corner the trim so it looks really nice with the house and i love these just because they're more like of a floral look and i think overall mixing them on the cabinet doors is going to not only only cost us like three bucks when these could be easily $5 a piece. It's also gonna really give a, a unique look to the kitchen. Vintage and it's upcycled and, and salvaged. So I just, I, I love that. On the top drawers, we're going to have the simple bullseye. Second and third drawer, we're going to have these heavier ones tear down like that. But these I don't have very many of, so I decided to use these on the bottom cabinet doors. Top cabinet doors, are going to be a mix of the bullseye. I have the most of these. And also I wanna order some latches. I really love the cupboard latches, the look of it. All the up high cabinets are gonna be latches and also this cabinet, yes, I have not done it yet. <laughs> but this cabinet, uh, these upper cabinets will also have latches because I really wanna design that to look more like a piece of antique furniture. Okay, so I just went down an hour long rabbit hole of watching videos. <laughs> And I actually came across a video that was so helpful. It was like woodworking with Wes. So a shout out to Wes 
for helping me figure out this whole process. So this is a router, a wood router. It gives grooves and detailings and you, and you can do joinery and stuff like that. But I've always found it really hard to make it perfect because it's obviously with my hand. So I'm like running over the side of wood and stuff. So what he did is he actually attached it to it. Like he built a table for it. I was like, can mine attach to a table? I can. It has the screw holes. Well, I never knew that. I'm gonna build a table for my router, you guys. I have plenty of scrap wood. Ow. Basically, I'm building something to build things <laughs> with. Uh, so I kind of built me some boxes like this, just like I've done every other box that I've ever done. I just cut my cut my pieces and use my 90 degree angle clamp and use my multi-purpose screws to attach it together. So I'm thinking that this is gonna work for like the legs. I'm thinking that that's how this is gonna work. I just figured out how tall I needed it to be. You know, so if that's my legs, this has plenty of room, you know, space-wise for me to adjust it and attach it. I need a top. Okay, a table. <laughs> now what? <laughs> I need a hole. Hole. <laughs> you guys. You guys, I'm very proud. I built this. And I've just been working on it to make it work. But my router is attached. Look it. Look, and she's strong. So I know that they probably sell these like router table uh, bench things. Uh, this was made for free. Well, I take that back. I had to spend a dollar on the screws to attach it. Bringing you over to this side so that you can see, I just made the boxes out of two by fours, put a piece of three quarter inch plywood along the top and then connected the router really sturdy, connected it with these bolts here. And I just countersunk them so uh, specifically this one these don't really matter that much that looks good that was my mess up but these, <laughs> these are good okay so this is great for our table but now i need something just like he did he had basically a stop a wood stop it looks like this it's literally just one piece of plywood on top and then i cut two i split two and made them kind of separate in the center so that they could straddle or make a bridge over the router put it on top like this see how the router is in between this hole i've been slowly investing in more clamps because i feel like i use them a lot so i bought these little ones specifically for this purpose when i want to clamp things down to tables or like this a little guide for me if you will Wait, let's call this a guide woodstock guide so now our wood stop is in place i've actually thought a lot about how i was going to construct these cabinet doors. I obviously do a lot of projects and join wood together with pocket holes. The more I thought about using pocket holes for the cabinet doors is that you, you have to have the pocket holes somewhere. So the pocket holes, when you open your cabinets, you would see the pocket holes on the inside or you would have to use another like piece of plywood to cover them up. Um, and it just wouldn't give like a super clean finish. So I was like, well, what do I do? I don't know how to do all of these like fancy cuts and stuff. That's why I started watching that video that I've been talking about, about the guy that built this. Um, and I'll leave that video linked for you. I am at essentially going to do his process, but with a few changes. So we're going to be attempting to do like a tongue and groove type situation. We're choosing a clean look that's just glue and joints over nails and screws. So let's talk about wood. I did some research and poplar seemed to be the most popular. <laughs> poplar, poplar was most popular. It was like the cheapest of the harder woods, especially for something that was like being used a lot. So I went to the hardware store fully looking for poplar wood. Uh, they really didn't have any on hand when I was at the store ready to buy material. Um, they just had a few boards and they weren't in great condition. It was gonna be $6.40 a foot which means it was gonna be $51.20 a board. When they didn't have a lot of the poplar, I turned around and I was looking at the pine. I think it's a little softer, don't quote me on that, but I think so. I, 
all of the pine looked real good and smooth. Like they were all stacked perfectly. And the pine actually ended up being cheaper than the poplar. Something else that he did in the tutorial that blew my mind, he actually used each side of a larger piece of wood to have more control and just to manage it better. And I thought that was so smart. This is basically, I think, going to be a series of testing on scrap wood to make sure that our router is in the right spot. It's cutting the right depth and, and measurements. So essentially, we're going to start by testing the tongue. We're going to make the tongue. So basically, it looks like uh, an upside down T. <laughs> So we need a quarter on this side, a quarter tongue, and a quarter on that side. That's our plan here. And also a quarter inch down. So a quarter inch this way. So it all needs to be quarter. No, I mean, it's so, it's so close, but I think I can go move it back just a a tinge much better okay my brain's kind of working through the math I think I'm gonna lose a quarter of an inch by doing the joint so I cut another piece at 30 and a half because I'm gonna lose a quarter of an inch on each side and that's gonna change my measurement so I'm gonna make that note I'll let you know how all this comes out guys this is my rails that go across this way so one for the top and one for the bottom so the the tongues go on each side here so we're gonna run it through like this wish me luck So I didn't have this problem on the sample, but I'm noticing that you see how there's like little dilly dillies. I said that that was kind of a good, I mean, it's very minimal, but like, it's kind of like, I don't know if it's too high. I'm gonna measure it. The measurement looks good. It could be a little, this could be positioned a tinge lower. Yeah, just little like fuzzies. Like look at my little fuzzies. But I mean, you could just like sand those and get them all off. But it looks so good, you guys. Like we did that. And we need to make grooves. Okay, how do we make grooves? Okay, you guys, I think I got it. So same bit, not changing it out to a different one because that takes a lot of stress too because you have to turn it over and take it off. I did have to raise my little board. I put it, now I've got three boards stacked here to make my wood stop, but I did it. This one and that one, and we have a system. Now what? <laughs> I, um, okay. So here's the one we cut before. And basically the grooves need to go all along the inside, you know, for the inside panel. The We're gonna use quarter inch plywood for the inside panel of the door. He actually used like half inch plywood and kind of cut them in on the sides. Um, I already have quarter inch plywood. So my test cabinet that I'm doing right now, that's that's what I'm gonna use. If I feel like it's not heavy enough, cause I feel like that's the only thing that would differ. I feel like if it's not heavy enough, then I will go ahead and up it to half inch and kind of do what he did. But all of the inside needs grooves. Oh, yes. <gasps> wow. You guys, we did it. Look at that. Do you see that? So now we can cut the boards three inches and three inches on the table saw. Okay, now we're gonna do what they call dry fitting. All right, test run was a fail. <laughs> well, 
little, it's a little too thick. That's fixable. Wait, what? No. <gasps> this is very exciting, you guys. Okay, I'm getting better at it. I cut new rails and did them all and it's all making sense in my head now. I've learned it's really important to select perfectly straight boards and really have some pressure so that it makes that straight cut with the router. So let's dry fit it again. This is a style, rail, rail, style. <laughs> Wish me luck. Oh, okay. Yes. So I'm finding that he had a more of a snug fit. Mine kind of just slips in. I think it'll still be good because it's going to be glued. Okay, so now we got to cut the plywood. Okay, let's dry fit it with the plywood this time. Oh, okay. I am worried about just like the plywood texture. Um, I'm going to sand it first because it's going to be really hard to sand after it's in this frame. Um, so I'm going to do that and now we just need to glue it and clamp it. That's it. Okay, we're going in with the glue. We only want the glue where the rails are going into the styles. So where the top and the bottom are going into the sides. So just about three inches. So I'm just going to measure here where to kind of stop my glue. I saw him do that too. I was like, he's teaching me so many cool tricks. Okay. And we want to be generous with it. We want it to ooze out. I always thought it was bad for wood glue to ooze out, but it's actually a good thing. It means there's enough there. I also ordered something called space balls that he talked about. You don't want to glue in your plywood piece, your center piece, because wood naturally expands and contracts. So there's these things called space balls that are coming tomorrow and I'll show you. I'll put in a clip. And we're gonna put those in between the seams where the plywood's meeting the, the frame itself so that as it expands and contracts, it gives it that room and it keeps everything tight, but it also allows it to move. Wild, this is all wild. Goodness, I'm just making a mess. Okay, we get all of it nice and now we're gonna clamp. I hope these other ones are big enough. I don't know. I'm just gonna let this stay clamped like this overnight and we are gonna bust out some cabinet doors tomorrow because I'm very proud. I want to see like how strong it is, like when it's it's all all the glue is like done. We can sand down the top. Good morning, guys. I let this sit overnight. So this is the moment of truth really of whether the cabinet door is gonna feel substantial. Now this one that we built is for the freezer so it doesn't really have to feel that substantial. That's why I went ahead and used the quarter inch plywood but you know, it's gonna be attached to the freezer anyway. So I'm hoping, hoping, hoping. Oh man, we got stuck in my, no! <laughs> my lift up got stuck. Well, we know the wood glue is strong. Oh, you guys. That's good. Wait, that's good. I think we did it. Okay, so this is a straight shaker, right? So we don't have any design on the inside. I was thinking about it last night and I was like, well, I could do, I could add a trim. You know, but if I buy a trim, cause then it's gonna add to the cost and be a whole nother step. So I'm gonna sand it, flat sand it. Oh my God, oh my. I glued everything. <laughs> okay, so I still have a little bit of base frame work to do on the bottom here, but essentially this goes here. So this is one of the trim pieces that I used on the hood. Uh, and it's, it's very small. I need to look up and see how much it was, but it, I, it was per piece, 96 inches. So eight feet for eight feet of this, it's 576. Two and a half. 
30. To add this trim to this cabinet would increase the price of the cabinet by $5. But this is the biggest one. So it would cost between three and $5 per cabinet to add this trim. It would carry the same design from the hood onto the cabinet. So it would be like a custom look. Let's call it four, an average of $4 times 42 cabinets, 168 bucks to add a detail like this. Would that be a cost that you guys would spend to add this detail? It looks more cottagey than contemporary. Right, and you think the straight shaker looks contemporary? Yeah. Yeah, or, or farmhouse or, you know what I mean? Like it's just kind of a straight shaker. This looks a little more detailed, like our crown molding has such heavy detail, but then our cabinets would look so simple, you know? It would cost me $168 to add this detail. You would do it, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're already saving so much on our cabinets. Yeah. Yeah. I'll yeah. Okay, so in about an hour and a half, I've made four of them, four. Just the shaker, it's like cut all the wood, router all the wood, glue it together and clamp it. Um, I think one of the things I'm running into is that I only have three sets of clamps. So I, have, I can only really do three cabinets at a time um, because they have to stay clamped for at least 30 minutes. I had gotten a strip of this trim because I've been using it quite frequently. I actually used it in the bathroom too, in the guest bathroom. Um, so I cut them at exactly the size to fit in the cabinet at a 45 degree angle. So when the side piece goes into the top or the bottom piece, it's perfectly square and it fits inside this frame. I think what I'm gonna do is a combination of wood glue and my 5 8 brad nails. Okay, it's been about 45 minutes so I took the clamps off and I'm gonna sand it. And we actually have one complete with trim and everything. Well, you guys, I, I think we did it. I, I think um, I think this is definitely going to work. I procrastinated this project so much because I'm just like I don't don't know. I think I was worried about the pocket holes, and then once I did a little more research and I figured out that I could actually do them without pocket holes and do them like they do them or like professionals do them, it made me feel a lot more confident in doing these myself. We're definitely saving a lot of money. With the addition of like the 160-ish dollars for the trim, which I think adds a lot. Look, look at this. I mean, imagine if that wasn't there. I feel like too, that would be a great way to upcycle or um, add something else to your shaker cabinets if you have those, make them a little, feel a little more fancy or something, you know what I mean? If, if that's the look that you want, especially for like this cottage, I feel like it needed something, a little bit of something extra instead of just being more straight. $313.10 worth of pine wood. That was 10 boards at eight foot. And I also had to obviously buy the glue. So the glue was about $5 a piece. And I bought the little um, bolts that were a dollar to put in my router. So obviously I already had the router. I had these scrap materials to build the, my little jig here that came in really handy. Let's just say for just for material at 313 plus the five, $320 plus the additional 160 for the trim. We're to 
let's call it $500, let's say. Maybe I might need to go back and get some more wood. I don't know if I'll need some, some extra once I, I get, I still have plenty left and I did the big ones first. But for $500, I'm doing all of our cabinet doors and then obviously the hinges, the drawer slides and to build out the box of the drawer, that's obviously gonna be additional cost. I know cabinets can be very, very costly if you get them custom made for your house. We're talking tens of thousands of dollars. This is definitely worth the time invested to save on the budget in such a big way. And I think it did a pretty good job, you guys. She looks good. So I hope you guys enjoyed this style of video, kind of just learning with me on creating these cabinets. I really didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how I was gonna do them. I was really worried about the router situation. And once we built this guy, it was just a game changer. That is something I'll have forever. I hope it lasts forever. I mean, I don't know if I did a great job building it, but it's gonna last me through this project, but I would not use a router in any other way now without a table. It just gives me such a better cut. I love the joint. I, I was really worried about seeing pocket holes, you know, on the back and stuff. So I'm gonna be doing this for quite some time. I have 42 to make and I've made five. <laughs> at least I know what I'm doing. I feel like I'm gonna get faster at it too. I feel like, you know, this is just the beginning and I'm like gonna get a system and cutting them. I feel like one of the major things that I'm gonna have to figure out now is actually the size on all of the other cabinets. I just kind of figured out the refrigerator side of the, of the kitchen. We're gonna be doing decorating and tiles. So make sure that you're following my vlog channel too because in the next few days, I'm gonna go and look for some tile samples. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more episodes in our kitchen renovation and more renovation content to come. We've got the living room, the outdoor space that we're still gonna do the pavers. The living room is obviously up next and then many, many more to come. Bedrooms, another bathroom, a closet, organization, all of those things. So I will see you guys again on Sunday for another renovation video. Bye guys. Wow. Kind of impressed. Golden, golden things. Golden. I follow only golden. Golden, golden things.